Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of EverQuest Old School. So on the last episode, if you guys watched that, uh, you saw I leveled to level 5 with my cleric. And I've been kind of drooling over these new spells because uh, they're pretty nice. I get a new heal spell. Uh, I also get a few uh, new other spells like an attack one, uh, the fever, f f or however you say that, the summon drink, uh, which will be nice because I'm almost out of drink. Uh, gate, which is a really, really nice spell. Teleport you right back to your buying location. Uh, it's a good emergency evac, basically, for you. You can use it, get out of some place that you know you're not going to be able to survive. Cleric is usually the last person to get hit, uh, and so therefore you have plenty of time to realize that, hey, things are going to go bad, the group is going to die, there's not a whole lot you can do about it, uh, but you have enough power to, uh, to, to gate out, save yourself, which kind of sounds a little selfish, but at the same time, if you do save yourself, uh, that means you have full armor and you're ready to go to help your team, uh, you know, get their bodies back. Uh, I would rather have three people who can do it to save themselves than, than die needlessly in a group simply because they happen to be there. I mean, if you can fatigue death and you don't do it, uh, that's just stupid. I mean, I wouldn't want you to do that no matter who you are. I mean, you know, fatigue death, save yourself, you can help us get back, you know, so gating out is always an option. If things are going bad, just gate out. I mean, you'll learn when to use it and when not to use it, obviously, but go ahead and put my other heal spell down as well. I'll have both of them up. Uh, you can see the new ones take a little bit longer to them. Uh, you'll also get your first uh, stun spell, which is a really, really good spell to have. Go ahead and take off my courage. Put this one on. Uh, stun is a really, really good spell to have. If you see the, the, the character healing itself, uh, then go ahead and stun it. Uh, that will stop him from really being able to get that spell off. Or any spell, whether it's an attack spell or a heal spell, it don't matter. You just use it uh, to stop him. Uh, holy armor, summon drink. I'm going to do summon drink first. I'll leave that on. Uh, I'll take strike off. Put this new one on. Not that I'm really going to be using my, my damage spell, uh, but it's nice to have it there just in case. Uh, sometimes you actually not put your new damage spell on uh, because it requires so much power. And as a healer, you may have a little bit of power to throw at the creature every now and again when you're full power, especially if you have, like, clarity and stuff like that. But you may not have a whole, like, two bubbles to throw at it. Uh, so you may use, like, a lower level one that doesn't use quite as much power. Uh, which is, you know, always an option. I'm going to put this one up here. I actually haven't been able to cast any of my spells yet, so this will be interesting. So let's use the big heal spell. Let's see how much it does on her. So 70 to 90, that's not bad. That 20% versus the 10% it was doing earlier. Uh, I didn't see how much power it used though. I'll have to check that out next time I use it. Uh, let's go ahead and make some... Uh, stand up. Now these drinks you always want to put in the backpacks before the drinks you actually have because they're summoned. And I'll show you what they look like. Uh, and it says temporary. Now well, this is the first item that you guys will see is temporary. Basically what that means is if you log off, if you camp, go link dead, uh, anything along those lines, this stuff will disappear. It's gone because it's magical. You're basically something like a temporary magical drink. Uh, that is only there because you exist, you know, and the moment you're no longer on the server, uh, this stuff ceases to be, so. What I would usually do is cast this stuff when I first logged on, I would do a stack of 20, and I do believe later on you can summon two or even four at a time with the later level ones, but uh, you summon like a stack of 20 uh, and then go off and fight, and that would last you for a good session online, uh, you know, good three, four, or five hours or something like that. Uh, and if you ran out, because you got into a really good group, or you just got uh, really, you know, into something, and you just cast some more later on when you're doing really well, so uh, it's not really that big of a deal. Uh, it does use a little bit of power at this level, but then again, you know, what doesn't use power at this level? Uh, so you just kind of have to decide whether you want it or not. So let's go ahead and put on our holy armor. In fact, I'll leave my inventory up so you guys can see what that does. It 
it looks like it increases our AC, so this is something we definitely want to put on the tank. Uh, but then again, we already have a cleric here, level 5, uh, so chances are he's already put it on the guy, so... I'm just gonna med up, so I have a little bit of power to spend on heals if they need it. I'm only at 14%, so that's pretty low. And you'll see that over here on the side, uh, as a caster, especially as a cleric, or the healer, I should say, uh, you're gonna need to have these buttons, and you're like, what are those? Well, OOM stands for Out of Mana, uh, and it's a button that I click, and it will tell the group that I am OOM, and they know that means that I have no mana left, no power. I can't cast any more spells. So, if there is another healer in the group, say like a paladin, or a druid, or a shaman, or something along those lines, uh, they know that if they have any power left, stop attacking, save it for the heals. Uh, if we don't have anybody like that left, then the other people know that uh, if you're not attacking, if you've been saving power, you're at like 70%, you've been slowly using it, uh, go ahead and burn that creature down as fast as possible so we don't lose anybody. Uh, because if we die, you're going to lose it all anyway, so you might as well use it now and med later, so it's a it's a definite thing to do, uh, you know, let people know how much power you have. Again, uh, the tank will usually have hotkeys of his own, saying a mana check, which is MC. Uh, she's checking how much power the rest of the group has, whether it's the healer, the enchanters, the necros, everybody he just wants to know. And then he'll get an idea uh, just from, you know, playing the game. Uh, what's an acceptable amount of power per cleric or per character um, to do certain pools? I mean, he knows certain pools. He's, uh, his safeguard would be probably, uh, you know, 40 to 50, 60 percent uh, on the healers. Uh, in other rooms, he may not need to know what you have because it's such an easy pool that he'll get one. And, and whether you have 10 percent or 20 percent, he, he knows you're going to be able to cover him uh, from just simply medding during the fight. So. But he'll always want to know before he does those pulls, and this just makes it easier. I can go ahead and call it out whenever I want. I'm at 10% mana, I'm at 20% mana, I'm at 30% mana, so on and so forth. All the way up to FM, which is just full mana, uh, and then GTG, which is good to go. Uh, so that you can reply back to his, his question, which is not just uh, how much power do you have. Sometimes they ask, uh, are you ready, are you good to go? Uh, and he's waiting for everybody to say it. And you can just click it that way because it's something is it is something you're going to be typing quite a bit otherwise. So it just saves you a little bit of time, a little bit of effort. Uh, but if you don't mind the typing, if you can do that real quick, or you can do it on the go while you're running through a room or, or doing other things, talking to other people, uh, then don't make hotkeys for it. You don't have to. But uh, I feel that this really saves a lot of time for a healer. Uh, I should stop saying healer, just casters in general, whether you're a wizard or anybody else. It doesn't matter. They still want to know how much power you have, so. And then of course I got train, just in case you have a train, LFG for, uh, to turn my looking for group on. Uh, just having those little initials above your, your head uh, will allow people to know right off the bat that, hey, you're looking for a group. Uh, so when you run into an area, you don't even have to ask, they just know it. And if they have space, and they con you, and they see that you're around the same level as them, uh, and they can pretty much tell what class you are uh, later on in the, in the game, you know, just by looking at you. Like, you can tell that guy right there in front of me is a, a monk. Um, you know, and the enchanters are all wearing green right now, so you can tell those are all enchanters. And druids pretty much all look the same as well, so you'll just be able to tell that, hey, that's a druid. Uh, and he's around the same level as me. We need a healer. Click, invite, you're in the group uh, without even having to ask. So and that's kind of nice, too. Plus, they could do a... Uh, a search for people looking for groups and say, hey, I know you're looking for a group, I know you're three zones away from us, uh, but we got a space open in Seb if you want it. Uh, and that's pretty nice too, you don't even have to be in the same zone, but they can still find you. Uh, so there's there's a lot of benefits to turning that on. Uh, really no side effects as far as I've seen. Uh, unless of course you happen to be a healer, and there's no healers on, and then you will be getting, uh, you know, hounded whether you're in a group or not. I've, I've had those days where I log on, I get a group right away, and the entire time I am on that day, all I keep getting is messages, hey, you want to come over here? Hey, you want to go do this? Hey, you want to go over there? And they're from people I don't even know. Like, I've never met these people. I've never grouped with these people. Uh, they're just doing a who all cleric or who all healer, you know, uh, level 50 and above and all that other stuff. So they're, they're just looking for anybody. Uh, but it definitely does get you into some interesting situations, which is cool. But uh, all 
albeit uh, a little weird. I'm sure enchanters go through the exact same stuff uh, because everybody wants an enchanter for really, really hard areas, you know, the mez and the, the, the clarity and all that other stuff that you get, all that, that great stuff you get for being an enchanter. Man, we haven't uh, had to use our power for a while. for this druid, because like I said, I was actually putting this group together for like 20-30 minutes before we finally even got one person, so I know what it feels like to sit there and just look for some, you know, try to get a group together. It's easy sometimes of the day, and other times it's just outright impossible, like you just can't do it. Once I get to about 90% uh, of my power, I might throw, uh, you know, toss in a uh, direct damage spell just to try it out and see how it works. Uh, but you know, I want to be close to full life. I'm not paying attention, so people are getting hurt. I'm not healing. This is waiting until the fight's over before he leaves, which is fine with me. I'm not in any rush to get him out of here. I mean. You know, you may have somebody else coming along the way, and they may have to sit there for a few minutes while whoever is still here, you know, gets their last few kills, whatever they want to do. But heck, you know, they've been with you the whole the whole time, so don't just be in a rush to get them kicked out because you got somebody else waiting. You know. necessarily need uh, another druid but uh, you know they can use their damage shield or not damage shield damage spells instead so never did hear back from him so he may not actually be coming we send him another tail He, uh, he logged off. Tossed him an invite, but he didn't uh, accept it, so he may have gotten tired of waiting. Yeah, there he is. Get her. 
a heal. And you can see when the other guy, the other healer over here to the right, starts to cast a spell, those little blue sprinkles will come out of his his hands like when I do it. Uh, so you will be able to know if somebody else is casting. Uh, also, if uh, you guys set it up beforehand and say, hey, you're going to be the main healer, I'll be the assist, or, or vice versa, or whatever the case may be, uh, you're welcome to do that to, to clear it up a little bit, especially if you got like a druid or a shaman and things of that sort. They can really be the, the backups because they have so many other things that they can do, like a, a druid can snare, he can root, he can direct damage spell, he has, uh, you know, damage shields he can cast on a group. Uh, shamans have, you know, just numerous buffs that they can throw on people. Uh, so they can at least do something other than healing a cleric, where he can buff up a little bit. It doesn't take that long to buff up, and their buffs uh, usually last for quite a long time. Uh, so beyond that, beyond the first, you know, 10-15 minutes of buffing everybody up, uh, and struggling with healing, uh, there's really not a whole lot left for them to do. Uh, you know, they do get stun spells and, and roots and things of that sort, but you know, for the most part, you're not going to use that in a group. And their attack damage spells are really uh, mana insufficient. Like, they just, they're not worth the damage you're doing for the mana that you're casting versus the mana you could be using for healing. So, it really is just a heal class. Like, that's really all you can do well. Uh, in my opinion. Now, some people may be different. Some people, I've always heard about those warrior clerics out there. I always thought it was a little silly. Uh, you know, if you're going to be a cleric, be a cleric. You know, if you're going to be a, a druid, be a druid. A druid could be a lot of different things, but only within that that field. I mean, you wouldn't want a druid to be a tank any more than you would want a wizard to. I mean, it's just not what they were made for. You could do it, probably, if you got the right armor and and, you know, did the right things, but it would just be so ridiculous. It wouldn't be anywhere near as good as if you just went with the tank. So, like when I when I talk these these generalities and, and say, you know, this is the way it is and this is the way that is, I'm referring to what you're going to get the most out of. You know, you're going to get the most out of a high elf uh, cleric than you would say, uh, I don't know, like a, a dwarf, I think, starts with more... Or an ogre starts with more uh, strength than anything else, so uh, you're not going to get the best cleric out of that. You could still do it, but that's not what I'm referring to when I say that you should just use, you know, these other classes. And bards are nice. Uh, right now, I think he's playing his heal song. Let's look at this. Uh, no, I think that's for stamina, actually. Uh, but he also has... Uh, now he's playing more than one. His battle chant. And you can see it lasts for 12 seconds, where the other one lasts for 6 seconds. He's actually twisting those songs uh, as a bard. And for those of you who don't know what that means, he doesn't have spells like we have spells. He has songs. He clicks the button and the song just stays on. As long as he's playing that song, everybody in the group gets that, that effect of whatever the song is. Uh, if he's playing a song for direct damage uh, or... You know, some kind of damage. Uh, it will affect the, the creatures instead of you guys. Uh, but he just leaves it on. Twisting songs means that you figure out how long a song lasts, whether it's 12 seconds, 6 seconds, uh, and you cast it, click it off, cast another one, click it off, cast another one, click it off, and go back to the first one. And therefore, by doing that, you can actually have three songs playing uh, continuously. Uh, but you have to sit there and rotate through those three songs over and over and over again. And so usually what they will do is put those on the keyboard and do, you know, you hit 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, and back and forth uh, through that whole, basically continuous. Like the whole time you're playing your bards, you're doing that. And so you can imagine, not only after four or five hours, but just after like 20 minutes, uh, your hands all cramped and stuff like that. So it does take a skill. And so occasionally you'll see bards being lazy and they'll just put one song on and just take a rest, you know, and if they have their microphone on, you can hear their fingers crack when they do their knuckles and stuff. I mean, it's it's kind of a pain to do that that class, but it's very cool when they do it well, especially on, like, raids and stuff. It's when you really only need to do those three at the same time. Uh, and you can do more than three, too. I mean, you do get the ability to uh, use musical instruments, which actually increase how long the, the songs will last. Uh, so if you found, uh, you know, like three or four songs that all used your, your loot, 
or your drum or your flute uh, because it only increases those songs that use that that musical instrument that you're casting or that you have equipped. Uh, so you don't want all the songs or as many of the songs to use that that ability as possible and then twist them together and you may actually be able to get three, four, five, six maybe uh, songs all at the same time. I think the most I ever saw was four. Um, but you know, you might be able to get that fifth one. Although again, you know, that's a lot of work. Because it's not like you're just getting it once and then you're, you're set. You've got to do that over and over and over again. And at the same time you're attacking and moving and rearranging your creature, talking to people if you really want to. You're not going to be able to talk because you have one hand full of just using the little buttons. So. It's something to consider, but it's very cool when they can do it. This guy's twisting two songs, which is decent uh, for a low level. Three songs is about average. Uh, but again, I don't, I don't blame them for taking a break. Bulls are kind of slow, man. Right? I wonder what those groups were thinking when I joined last time with my paladin. I was pulling like crazy compared to this. I mean, this is just... I mean, it's nice, but it's just so slow. Slow laid back, and, and you can just kind of chill and... Just have a conversation with somebody like I'm having a conversation with you guys right now. I would love to hear from you guys. Uh, what's the weirdest conversation you guys ever had in EverQuest? Uh, for those of you who played, uh, you know, what's the, not the strangest country, but the most, uh, the country that you thought was the coolest to meet somebody from, you know? Uh, and it could be from the United States. It doesn't have to be from someplace uh, different. It could be from wherever you were that you thought that, that was really cool to meet somebody. Because uh, chances are you never would have met somebody from that place in real life uh, in your lifetimes. So. Like for me, uh, that's part of the enjoyment, as I said many, many times before. But I also watch on YouTube uh, a lot of things called uh, Slow TV, which is like uh, a plane ride or... A train ride, bus ride, car ride, uh, you know, whatever, of another country. Like, I, I watched a, a whole video of uh, driving through the Alps on a train. Uh, and it was beautiful. That's probably something I'll never actually get to do in real life. I would love to, uh, but the money that involved to fly, you know, over there and then get on the train and, and do all that stuff, it's just, it's a lot. And it's not easy, you lose luggage, it's, it's a lot of hassle. And so I can go on these little mini vacations just while I'm watching. Uh, places and get to see pretty much everything I will get to see in real life in HD uh, to boot uh, without all the hassle. Of course, there's a lot of enjoyment that I'm losing out as well, but it's still very, very cool to, to check those out. And so for me, you know, this is kind of that same sense as I get to travel and, and, and talk to people from other countries without ever having to leave, uh, you know, the comfort of my own house, so... Got one person heading out. I'm gonna send uh, Trist here so. So when they leave, I'll go ahead and invite her. Got one down. Let's see what level is this guy? He's red, so no space for him. Uh, let's see. Go ahead and look for one more. The reason I do that is because we don't really need an extra person, but 
the more people you have, when one person leaves, the more chance that the group will stay together. So if you're on the ball, uh, it's a lot easier to find one person for a group of five than it is to find, you know, two people for a group of four, or even three people for a group of three. Uh, you know, keep it as high uh, or as close to full as possible to make things easier on you in the long run, and keep the group going longer uh, than otherwise would go, so. Because as you saw right there, just out of the blue, we had two people leave. Uh, so that could be the end of your group. If all you have is two, or if all you have is four people, uh, and two of them leave, you're down to two, I mean, that's that's it. You know, and just a second ago, you had a really good group going really strong. So take the time when you have it to get more people in there uh, so that you... Hold on a second. That way they don't invite a friend without, uh, you know, knowing that the spot has been filled. I let the group know that, you know, I got somebody on the way already. Or if somebody else shows up, they know not to say, yeah, we got an extra spot. They know the group's full, so. Just keeps everybody on the, the same page and stops uh, misunderstandings and hard feelings from, from a lot of people uh, before it gets too bad. This guy's gating out, I think. Looks like Gator and Viz. Yeah, so he gated, so I guess he could sell. It's not even part of the group anymore, so yeah, I guess he was leaving. That's the same with any class, that if you have another bard already here, uh, you know, they can twist three songs, the other bard can twist another set of three songs, uh, and that would really uh, allow them to use the whole set of songs, you know, so that the, the group could experience some of these uh, stranger ones that you normally don't get to see. I mean, the popular ones is like the health one at a low level, at a higher level, that one's pretty worthless. Uh, the mana one is the one they're going to want you to string together. Uh, they have a haste one that increases how fast you attack. Uh, what else? They have a whole bunch of resist songs. And those are the ones that usually never get uh, used at all. Uh, go ahead and... I haven't got any builds in this group since I started. Uh, the last group I was in actually had a list, and they would go down the list and be like, okay, it's your turn, your turn, and so forth. Uh, to loot those belts, so everybody got an equal number. Great, she has three. Where is she? Come on, get her. There we go. Of course, now they're all on me. That was a bad pull. Uh, that can be a pretty tough pull to boot uh, from that distance, especially if you don't have like a speed or something along those lines. Uh, it's it's pretty nasty. Those creatures or those orcs are pretty high level right there outside of Crushbone. So uh, if you don't think your group is ready for it, uh, don't pull it. But it's good experience if you guys can do it. You just need a decent tank. Uh, unfortunately, we just didn't have one right there. So let me met up or not met up. Uh, get my spells back. I don't know, I'm on my way back. Uh, 
Uh, see if she doesn't feel too bad about it. Uh, you know, because like I said before, that stuff happens. It's so not that big of a deal. Uh, all I need is my two heal spells up. And my gate, and then I'm ready to go. Again, I wouldn't go anywhere without your gate. Uh, you know, Mim, just because uh, you'll get into bad situations. And usually I'll have Root right above the gate spell. So those are my emergency spells that I'll, I'll always have Mim, i Root the creature, uh, and then gate out for those, uh, those bad situations. Uh, because even at later levels, if you're fighting a creature that's like dark blue, some classes can take that on by themselves. Necro, Mage, things of that sort. I can take those guys on. A Cleric, even at this level, well, for at this level you probably should be fine, but around level 15, 20, you lose that, that ability to pretty much take those guys on without just using your entire mana pool. Uh, and you have to like initiate the fight, make sure you get the root on them, and make sure you're buffed up and everything's ready to go. Uh, and it's a nightmare, so... At later levels, even if the creature doesn't do that much damage to you by hitting you, uh, it's still worth it to have gate and use it because it's just you're not going to be able to do that fight. And if you are, it's going to be very close, not really worth the chance you're going to die. And clerics get the ability to bind themselves anyway. They don't have to be inside of a town. Like if you're a class that has the ability to bind uh, the spell itself, you can bind yourself anywhere you want. If your class that doesn't get that spell, then you have to be bound inside of a city. Uh, so as a cleric, you can bind yourself literally right at the entrance to the zone you're in. And when you gate, you only move like 10 feet, you know, right outside the zone. Uh, you know, you lost aggro and you can zone right back in. So it's not a huge deal to, to gate out for us. So I'm stuck. Oh great, he got stuck in some wall or something. Ask him how. Let's see what he says. I've fallen through the earth in this game before. Oh, he got out. You know, you just be running along, and all of a sudden your guy just falls. He just plummets underneath the ground and just dies. And then you're like, oh great, how do I get my body back? Because you can't plummet being, you know, underneath the earth on your own and and go down there and loot your corpse and then come back up or something like that. So uh, you'll have to petition or uh, bug report it, let them know. The, it may take, you know, several hours a day for them to get to your guy, which is nice to have a, another character to play uh, that you can, uh, you know, play in the meantime until they get back to you. Because uh, they're going to need to be able to get to you and let you know. Uh, somehow, so you're going to need to be on the game waiting or an email or something along those lines that they're going to have to send you and let you know, okay, you can log on now and get your corpse over here or, uh, I'll pull your corpse to wherever you're at. Uh, GMs have the power to pretty much do whatever they want. Uh, you know, they can, they can zap from one zone to the next even if they're not anywhere close to it. They can uh, pull your corpse, they can kill creatures, they can loot the, the corpses off of things. Um, or the stuff off of things. Are you all classic? Let's see, where is my body? I don't want to stop looting. That's a weird bug. There we go. Now remember, leave something on it. Uh, you still want to be able to get a res later on. Sit down. Again, guys, uh, I think we're going to go ahead and end the video here. If you like these videos, uh, please hit the like button, subscribe. Leave comments below, or as always, you're welcome to hit me up in game. Thanks again for watching.